to an episode of The Stampede, where I take your gaming questions and a Let's Player and I shove them in my pants and jiggle all around until eventually they submit to my opinions. Sounds really bad when I say it out loud, but it's what's happening! I'm your host, Buffalo Prime, and as always, The Stampede is brought to you by The Hive, with Let's Plays, Game Reviews, and the Buzz Gaming Talk Show. We really are your one-stop shop for all things gaming, so make sure to comment, like, and subscribe today, and do all the stuff that you YouTubers love to do. So today our question actually doesn't come from an audience member. I'm so sorry. Don't hate me. Just submit more questions is essentially what needs to happen. Um, but today's question kind of bases around the gaming industry and the way it stands right now. The question is, what is your reaction and opinion uh, when video games are delayed? The producer comes out, the game developer comes out and says, we're going to have the game out at this date. And now we're going to push it back a couple of months. Push it back a year. Whatever happens. What's your opinion on that? When it happens, why does it happen? Anything like that. Let us know, obviously, in the comment section below your opinion. But I got to sit down today with Legant, a member of the Let's Play Sanctuary community. And if you are an aspiring Let's Player, or, you know, just starting out, or you're already pretty seasoned, Let's Play Sanctuary is a great place to go. Their details are in the description section below, along with Legant. But my interview with him went pretty well. Let's see how it went. Legant, welcome to the Stampede. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing great, although I'm questionable about being sloshed around in your pants. Well, it's happening, so... Okay. I have tight All right. pants, too. I don't know if you've seen my pants, but they are tight. So you were Yeah, no, be... I, I, I borrowed them the other day, so... Yeah, good, good, good. Pretty, so pretty gonna, well, yeah. You're going to get a lot of thigh in your face, but I have mm -hmm. good thighs, I've been told. Okay, yeah, I'm good with so... that. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so your Let's Play, uh, just kind of give you guys a background. Legat has a pretty long Let's Play series so far about Croc 2, which is a great throwback game. That game is fun to watch you, wa watch you play. And then Hearthstone, obviously you have a guilty obsession over that game, and it definitely shows in your channel. And uh, a couple of vlogs as well. That's something uh, you know fairly new, it looks like, for you. So uh, tell us about your channel. Yeah, I like to have a little variety. It keeps it fresh for me. It keeps it fresh for the viewers. Um, and, you know, it's part nostalgia, part, uh, as you said, guilty obsession. Every once in a while I fall into a game and just get really down deep down that rabbit hole. So. Yeah, that makes sense. So what got you into Let's Playing? Um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, a little bit of an egotist in all of us and add that to uh, love of video games. And I think this is the result. Yeah. And uh, obviously my powerful thighs around your face definitely got you. To it's a huge it. confidence boost. It yeah, is. Thanks. I know. I've been told that, ironically. So let's jump into our gaming <laughs> question today. Uh, we're asked, what is your initial react? Wow. Initial reaction. I just, I guess I have peanut butter in my mouth. When a game that you follow or that you want to play is delayed. And we got a lot of them that have come out of the woodwork recently. Uh, we're looking at uh, Homefront. That edition has been delayed. A Need for Speed game was delayed. Uh, you're looking at uh, Mega Man, not Mega Man, I'm sorry. Sonic for the 3DS was delayed. Sonic. Um, there's just a lot of delayed games right now. And it's kind of, it seems to be starting to become the norm of the video game industry. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think you said the operative point, and that's when it's a game you're following, that it becomes disappointing. When it's a game, you know, like a AAA, you kind of almost expect it, that there's just so many moving parts that inevitably something is going to go wrong. Um, and so when it's something that I'm not following, it's like, uh, okay, do your thing, do what you got to do. Um, but it's when a, a game that I am following, it, it, it makes me suspicious, makes me, uh, you know, kind of nervous for the game. The one that I'm thinking of today is uh, back in 2012. We're going back in time. Back in time. Thank you. Kickstarter. Um, so, you know, a lot of games have gotten their starts there. And a lot of games have kind of come to an end there. But this was the first one that really kind of broke the bank and made it big. And this was Double Fine's uh, Broken Age. Okay, let's, uh, let's um, go ahead and play some gameplay footage of that really quick, and uh, go ahead and keep going. And at the time, it was the most successful uh, fundraiser. Kind of blew everything out of the water with uh, $3.3 .3 million. Jeez. Which is kind of unheard of. That's absurd. Right. It, everyone was like, okay, I guess people really want this sort of thing. It's, you know, the standard point and click adventure of sort of the 80s and the 90s with a lot of the humor a lot of the spirit uh oh, okay. very similar gameplay yeah um but the problem was like that was all well and good people got tier rewards game promised but around 2014 january 2014 
they came out with the announcement that only half of the game was ready to be released. Wow. And that they were going to release that to earn more money to make the rest of the game. So three million dollars wasn't enough to complete. Was not enough. Jesus. Oh, <laughs> uh, the the head man Tim Schafer kind of came out and said, when we originally had started the fundraiser, it was around their goal was four hundred thousand, uh, and so when it got to three point three million, he sort of got carried away with building this world and making it bigger and bigger, and kind of got like away from everyone and what they were able to do within the time and the budget. Uh oh. Everyone, it was, there was a bit of an uproar, and I was like, I, I really love you guys. Uh, made one of my favorite games, which is Psychonauts, and now I'm not sure where you're going with this. I, it's, it's a delay in the sense that you're missing half the game. Right. But they, they did finish it, so that, that was kind of That's the relief. And, and uh, this year, they wrapped it up with the second act. The thing was, uh, for me personally, for the amount of money that was raised and everything that was promised... I don't think it lived up to anyone's expectations. That's a bummer. There was just so much buildup and with delay. And mm -hmm. it, it, right now I was looking at different wow, different people rating it. And it's around a 7 or 8. But with all that kind of saga, you would kind of expect a 9 or a 10. Yeah, the amount of effort and money that was put yeah. into that game, you would think a much better, much different result. I think that's that kind of goes along the lines of what this question is really rooted under, and it's the failure of expectations of a video game company. I mean, in terms of delaying a video game or in terms of what happened to this series, which was uh, raising all that money and just, you know, not delivering on a final product when they said they were going to. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, for some perspective, some game, like AAA games, can cost tens of millions of dollars. Right, but indie games don't. Right. Um, so I guess the problem was that it was good, just not as good as it could have been. Right. So do you believe that delaying is a good thing? Or do you believe that developers should probably have a more realistic timeline? I think I think that's the key. Um, I've read a lot of, I don't know if you've heard of it, uh, The Trenches, okay. which is both a, a comic strip and people who work in the video game industry can uh, submit their stories, their horror stories. Okay. And so you get a lot of stories about people who work 60 to 80 hours a week for not a whole lot of pay, this is especially true of uh, quality search or you know, yeah. testing and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. For not a lot of pay, and then at the end of the project, a lot of them get laid off because then they're not like full time employees. They don't get out, have to pay any of those benefits to all these people, and they just start fresh. And I think that's just a horrible combination of not realistic timelines with just the pressure to deliver something. And I think something's got to budge, something's got to change for that to be better. Well, and I think you look at the way that the industry is right now, and the majority of the companies that are dealing with what you just explained, having you know a large staff that works on these big titles, are the big companies, EA, Activision. You're looking at larger companies like that, where certain other genres are giving realistic timelines. I mean, you look at the Order 1887, or 82, or whatever the fuck that is, but that game... Uh, obviously didn't live up to the hype that it delivered, but that was like a seven or eight year developing cycle. And they made that very mm -hmm. public. And there are other games that have succeeded on giving a large time frame, saying at some point this game will be done. I mean, Kingdom Hearts 3 has been in the works for, you know, probably two or three years now with no end in sight. Um, you know, there are developers out there that are patient and it's the ones that aren't the need for speed, the Nintendos, I, not to bash on Nintendo, but I like to do that. <laughs> and, it's just these expectations aren't being met. And what what's your first reaction when you hear a game's delayed? Just kind of like, come on, guys, either get it right in the first place. Don't 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 get our hopes up. I think is what it boils down to. Mm -hmm. It's like I want to play this game now. I think. Well, I mean, that might be a, a problem with our generation. If you want to go in that territory now, 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 gotcha. instant yeah. gratification. Mm -hmm. um, but there's just like a lot to coordinate. T to be fair, there's a lot to coordinate. And the consumer has much more to say than if you were, say, like watching a movie. If, if you're watching a movie, you're plopped there. You don't have any say in the product. But because a video game is interactive, having that delay, having that false delivery is kind of denying the consumer party, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah I understand that. Now, last question for you, Legant. Yeah. Uh, we're looking at if Let's you were the there. lead developer, lead producer of a video game, and you're like, 
son of a bitch, this game's got to get delayed. How would you how would you break that to your consumer? Yeah, uh, the one I was thinking of is Duke Nukem Forever, which uh, started development in 1997 and came out in 2011. Hmm. Um, and it got changed hands, changed companies, changed uh, systems. But the way it ended up in Gearbox's hands, and they ended up having to delay it for a few more months. <laughs> They're like, just just give us a few more months, guys. And the way they announced it was they had a guy come up. I forget who it is, but it was like, we're so ready. We're so excited to reach the games. And then someone stuck a slide and was like, delayed a couple months. And he's like, you fucking serious? <laughs> because I think that's just, you know, mimicking the outcry from everybody uh, who was following that game. End up being a terrible game, but the announcement itself was the right move. So you would do that as well. You would kind of like simulate your uh, audience's reaction. Yeah, kind of beat them to the punch. Either be really upfront about it or or play into it. Right. All right, Legan. I appreciate the time that you've given the Stampede and being in this interview. Any last words for the viewers at home? Last words? Uh, are you, am I in front of a firing squad or something? Yes, you are, and you're going to die in about five seconds. So any last words, quickly, say it. Go, 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 say it. Uh, 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 pants. Pants. Um, um, there it is. Popcorn. Uh, nope, pants on monkey. the mind. Nope, you're Pumpernickel. done. I said one word. I said one. All right. <laughs> no, said words. <laughs> so, all right, Legan. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. And back to me, me in the studio. Awesome. Thank you so much, Legan, for being on the show. And as always, if any of you viewers at home want to be on the show, all you have to do is comment in the comment section below, and we will hit you up for that. Now it's my turn to slosh around in my pants, write that opinion, and just kind of wait till it pops out, which is right now. This is the part of the episode where it pops out of my pants. Okay, be ready. Be ready. Are you ready? Be ready? Be ready. It's coming out. Right now. It's out. Right now. Okay. So my opinion when a video game is delayed. I'm not as optimistic, I think, as most, uh, because I actually did at one point work in the video game industry. It was a very brief stint, and it was for a League of, Leg League of Legends competitor, but I did work in the video game industry, and I understand the constraints that the people are, and the developers are under for certain, you know, time frames. But at the end of the day, there is a gray area when it comes to developers and when that game is actually going to be able to be released. You really don't know until things fall over on my, on my table. But honestly, I'm just going to use this book as a prop now, but honestly, the thing is, in my opinion, video game developers need to wait on their game launch announcement until they know it's going to hit that date or hit it sooner. Okay? Like, how is it that NBA, a game that comes out every single year, right? Obviously, they're doing the same things and they keep updating, but they're able to not only hit the date that they want, but a week beforehand they can offer the game early to those that pre-order it. Okay? That's a completely different situation, I understand, but they still knew when that game was going to be released. Okay? I think game developers need to hold off on their announcements until they know for sure that game's going to be done. Right then and there, that's the game, and that's the date that's going to come out. Okay, when you do it prematurely, that's when you run into issues where you have to delay the game. And obviously, no things happen, but in the general concept of this question, I think developers need to wait. So I'm not happy when I see a game delayed. Not at all. I don't think I've ever been happy that a game's delayed. The next question was, is delaying video games a good thing? And in the sense of it, if you're kind of looking at the way I approached the first answer, I don't think that delaying a video game is ever a good sign. Okay, in my opinion, it's not a good sign. It means the developing team hit some kind of roadblock that they didn't foresee and have to get around, or the developing team isn't as strong. It's never a good sign when a game can't reach an outlined, announced date. That means that whatever faith they had in the game and the developing team failed. There was some level of failure in the production cycle. So I don't see it as a good thing, unfortunately. That is it necessary? Yes. I don't think we should ever release a broken game. Okay, don't get that misconstrued. I'm not saying they should hit a deadline if it's broken. I'm saying they should have realistic expectations of how that developing is going and wait to announce the game until it's ready to go, until they know for a fact that they're going to release a product they're going to be proud of on a certain date. But do not release a broken game. I would rather see delayed games than that. But is it a good thing? No. In my opinion, it's not. You know, and I'd love to hear your opinions. I haven't done any research prior to where I'm sitting right now on how many games were delayed and actually turned out to be really good games. Okay. But I'd love to kind of get some insight on that statistic. And the final question was, as a developer and producer, how would I announce to you, the gamers, that my game was being delayed? Oh, man, I love Legan's answer of being funny. I think that's a great approach because I think humor really does appeal to the gaming industry. 
uh, on a, a lot of different levels. So I think humor is a good way to go about it. I would say giving some stuff, um, maybe, you know, offering, you know, to those that have pre-ordered the game, kind of going along with the acceptance of the pre-order movement, and whether you accept it or not, or whether you uh, like it or not, it's there. Uh, anybody that's pre-ordered my game and is experiencing the delay, uh, maybe I give them the first DLC for free, or maybe I give them an in-game item for free, something along those lines. Uh, and then maybe I offer an additional bonus item when it comes to the game itself. Like, I'm sorry for all of you that have, you know, this game is being delayed for. If you buy the game brand new on game release night, I'll have a, re you know, a midnight release or a day one release package that has an in-game item as an apology for the delayed game. Because I don't want to give something that the game is just going to inherently have, because I want to apologize to those that have actually been patient and actually want the game. Not the consumer base that is just going to pick up the game later or doesn't have an opinion on my game or isn't following it. I want to apologize to the people that have. Because for the people that haven't, it doesn't matter. But for those that have followed it, day one, pre-ordered it, they want it, that's the people you have to appeal to. So Let us know what your thoughts are on that gaming question. And as always, thank you for stopping by in the Stampede. If you have a question that you want to see asked in future episodes, comment section's where it's at, man. Comment section's the golden land for us. So thanks again. Buffalo Prime here and I'm out.